And now, ladies and gentlemen. It is a foundational principle of the kingdom that once we as believers begin to serve the living God, we will also start to serve people. The two elements cannot be separated. Just as Jesus, in submission to serving the will of the Father, came to give his life in service to others, so we as believers will feel the same call. As new converts, our first act of service to God is usually an energetic witness to others as we share the experience of our new conversion with our immediate family and unsaved friends. Mostly, this first act of serving God is done in ignorance. We are just telling the people around us all about what happened to us in salvation. We are unaware that we've just started a life of dedication to serving others in the great commission of evangelism. We first come to church because we are needy for help. But as the Holy Spirit works transformation in us over time, our lives become more stable. And with every personal victory we achieve, we are able to stop focusing on ourselves and start to give back to the kingdom. The natural outflow of a life given in service to God is that we would also dedicate ourselves to serving others. Our text gives us direction as to what type of service we are expected to give to God when serving people. 
So he shepherded them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. The first element we see is the need for a right heart. The scripture emphasizes our labor should be done for the right reasons, with integrity of heart, not like the Pharisees of which Jesus spoke. Everything they do is done for people to see. They make their phylacteries wide and their tassels on their garments long. They love the place of honor at banquets and the most important seats in the synagogues. They love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and be called rabbi by others. But verse 4 tells us the fruit of that kind of service. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move one of their fingers to help. Right-hearted people service is not given for personal glory or to be seen by men. It is not even given for success according to the world's standards, but rather to please God. The Bible says success in kingdom service is found in such little things as giving your last two mites in an offering, or being generous and giving into the master's hand a small lunch of fish and bread. In the kingdom, success is measured by the quality of service, not the visual appearance of success. Service rendered from the integrity of heart is always successful in the eyes of heaven even if the visual response on earth is not quite dazzling. This truth is a great comfort to workers who labor with right heart and honest intentions, and yet do not see a hundredfold return. The second truth we find is a call to serve with skillfulness of hand. It is not enough to have a calling alone. Each worker must develop in the mechanics needed to support that call. Preachers obviously need to learn the scriptures, studying to show themselves approved. Musicians need to develop their talents with long hours of practice and repetition. Drama workers should labor to develop inspirational ideas and constantly refine their scripts for maximum effectiveness. Our text says, he guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. Each ministry has a burden of due diligence that is placed upon the worker to contend for a level of excellence in the mechanics of that labor. Because of the continual forward thrust of outreaches, there is a burden placed on volunteer workers to balance the demands of the ministry and other areas of regular life. Family life, work schedules, and personal achievements all have to be measured with the needs of the ministry, and we appreciate the personal sacrifice every volunteer makes. Anointing makes up for many of our shortcomings and restrictions on practice time. Yet we do not take for granted that we can always rely on anointing alone. Therefore, we also endeavor to do the best we can in striving for excellence with each production. The sacrifice can be significant, but so too are the rewards. Last December, the church in Jacksonville tried a new type of outreach, doing a Christmas-themed walkthrough utilizing the church property in another part of town. This trail is typically used for an outdoor haunted house, but was changed with much work to match the Christmas theme. Visitors passing down the trail experienced the Bible story of the birth of Jesus. Church members provided gift creations for sale and homemade food items to keep the crowds interested in staying longer. As people lingered, Bible characters performed roaming skits sharing the salvation message. Throughout the night, a gospel drama was performed in the big tent for visitors to be brought to a place of decision. This project was a great success with over 200 visitors and multiple conversions. Any outreach is only as good as the efforts of those involved, and the Lord anoints the labors of those who sacrifice their time and resources to bring the gospel to the same community in a new and creative way. Part of our service to others involves the dependability of successful outreaches. Some outreaches in the community have become annual events and build up a following of visitors who anticipate receiving a gospel witness. Last fall, the Newport News Church hosted their annual back-to-school block party outreach, providing free school supplies, a children's bounce house, face painting, games and food. A local barber wanted to give back to the community joined in with some barbers from the church to give out free haircuts. They had over 200 visitors attend and currently have one family who came from that outreach that has been baptized 
and is still serving God in the church. Our local churches have been very busy hitting the streets, skillfully serving people with the gospel message and integrity of heart. Pastor Dante Scott and the Fayetteville Church have had a great year since last conference. They have seen the church really lock into the fellowship vision with the congregation doubling and disciples rising up. The church is gaining momentum with a full song service ministry and Tuesday night prayer meetings. This February, they were able to start a Saturday night concert ministry with people writing original songs and testifying about the good things God has done in their lives. They recently married their first couple and baptized seven new converts. Pray for this church as they continue to plow the ground for Jesus. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Here I am, Lord, send me. I won't look back because I was made to be a part of the impossible. You gotta be impossible. Here I am. This month, the Norfolk Church sent an invasion team 14 hours away for a two-day outreach in their baby church in Pensacola, Florida. The team worked the streets outreaching for a music night and upcoming revival. Visitors were in attendance to hear the gospel message and were deeply touched by the testimonies and preaching. After a long weekend of labor, the team piled into the van and made the return trip, arriving just in time to go to work on Monday morning. Service to God and people involves personal sacrifice and some discomfort, but it provides an incredible boost to the local work. The Norfolk congregation is experiencing a great move among the youth in the church. Kids are getting involved in various ministry events, participating in drama presentations, and using their talents to find expression in music ministry. As the next generation dedicated to the call, they join with their parents and are ready to serve the world with the hope of the gospel. Last October saw a great blessing in the church as all the baby works returned to Norfolk for the Harvester's homecoming. Many congregations brought their people to join in for a time of fellowship and ministry from the returning pastors. Great dignity was placed upon the mother church to see the extended fruit of their vision. A final group pastor's photo tells the story of the blessing of God on that congregation. In Curitiba, the Gunkel family can be found pioneering a new missionary work in the nation of Brazil. This city of nearly two million people ranks number eight as the most populous city in the country and the largest in Brazil's southern region. The metropolitan area comprises 26 municipalities with a total population of over three and a half million souls. The Gunkels can be found doing what they have always done in previous labors, reaching out to anyone and everyone they meet. Pastor Sean brings his typical intensity and boundless energy to the foreign field with a hands-on approach in the lives of those that they serve. 
establishing new converts in the fundamentals of Christian service, teaching them the importance of faith, prayer, altar calls, baptism in water, and in the Holy Ghost, and especially the passionate calls of street evangelism. Laboring side by side, the Gunkles take the church by the hand and teach them how to witness and share the salvation story on the streets. God's witness is being honored with fruit added to the nucleus of this church as God is building a strong foundation for future success. Pray for them as they continue to serve people while serving God's master plan of evangelism. Cambodia, Pastor Perry and Josie Dominguez are happy to report the church is experiencing continued growth and maturity as they labor in Phnom Penh. God continues to add to the congregation and their influence is growing in the region. It is the privilege of the Takmau Church to host an annual area rally with churches from the Indochina Peninsula coming together for a time of ministry and fellowship. Pastor Sispansky ministered timely sermons to help keep them focused to the call of serving people. Alive with a vibrant youth, the nation seems ready to explode in revival as these young ambassadors for Christ hit the streets to reach their own. The annual Healing Crusade Rally in Almeria, Spain is a church event many of us know nothing about, but it gives us a glimpse of one behind-the-scenes servant that is making significant impact in world evangelism. Brother Manuel Delgado is a longtime member of the Athens, Georgia Church and tirelessly labors in the ministry of Spanish interpretation. He can always be found interpreting at many important ministry venues such as the Prescott Conference, Tucson, Mexico, and Argentina conferences. 
and is currently in our sound booth interpreting this video right now. As a faithful volunteer, he has stepped into the role of being the main interpreter in many of Pastor Mitchell's Latin Crusades. He gets to stand on the stage next to the leaders of our fellowship in the midst of the miracles. He is serving God's people with his commitment to learn the intimacies of the Spanish language after being raised in Brazil speaking Portuguese. There is also much financial sacrifice in leaving his job and sometimes traveling at his own expense to the next event. His service to others is a selfless example of how answering a call to serve God always leads to serving people. Our fellowship is establishing a presence in the nation of Madagascar. Pastor Steve and Katie Nicodemus are laboring in the capital city of Antananarivo. Madagascar ranks number six of the poorest nations on the planet and is ripe with a people desperate for change and willing to believe in the supernatural power of God. Recently in the church, a report came back from a woman who was touched on an outreach and then came to church seeking prayer for sickness. Doctors were ready to amputate her feet in order to save her life but she believed God for a miracle. After asking for prayer, she felt an immediate change within her body, and in the next few days her condition began to clear up. The doctors were amazed and gave her a clean bill of health, astounded at her recovery from the deadly disease of leprosy. The next time she came to church, she gave a testimony saying she had been healed of leprosy, just like in the Bible. Now she walks to church every service and is an example of how our miracle-working God serves the needs of the people that will serve Him. One unique hallmark of our fellowship is giving local congregations the opportunity for personal expression and world evangelism, encouraging workers to volunteer their time to travel to foreign lands and bring the gospel to the lost. Last April, the Norfolk congregation sent 24 people to Central America on an impact team to the country of Belize. The team spent 10 days laboring in the highways and byways of San Ignacio, helping with the outdoor healing crusade and then a Pastor Morales revival in Belize City. The team saw many conversions while praying for people on the streets and dynamic miracles of healing in the crusade. The team somehow found time to play tourist and enjoy some of the local scenery while exploring ancient Mayan ruins, swimming at a scenic cave and even diving with the stingrays. World evangelism offers opportunities to serve people with the gospel and also to make some great memories too. The church in Mendoza, Argentina is working to shine for Jesus and the region. Contending for a vibrant music night, workers take their efforts outside of the walls of the church, doing concerts day and night all across the city's many parks and open fields. The church is always outside reaching the lost with family fun days and healing crusades in the midst of the public square. People respond unashamed with their desperate need and come down for prayer hoping for a miracle. They saw over 70 visitors and had 33 pray for salvation. Several of these visitors are now locked into the church and growing in God. In the winter months, they moved it all indoors and shifted the labor to fit the season with a hilarious Christmas play comedy. <music> Pastor Adam Dragoon and the Virginia Beach Church sent a team to Miramar to assist the Colonas when they were pioneering in the city of Mandalay. They outreached on the streets, ministered in the English club, and helped with the baptism of new converts. Eventually the door to Miramar closed and our workers had to leave, but the fruit of their service remains for eternity. Sometimes all the potential we hope for in our efforts does not come to pass, but the eternal view will always reveal a different picture. There is a gospel witness in the lives of the people the Kelowna served that will continue to shine in that place.
King David was a man after God's own heart, and he served his generations. We as believers are in constant pursuit of the heart of God, seeking transformation into our lives, the attributes found within. As we continue to serve the people of our time, God honors our efforts with the wonderful fruit of souls added to the kingdom. The joy of salvation is our fuel, compelling us to go one door further, one outreach more, one witness beyond. We extend the gospel call from one man to another, then another, and then another, all in the service of the heavenly vision. One man to another. This world will never be the same. It's forever changed from one man to another. Hi, my name is Allison. I'm 18 years old and I'm from Myanmar. The Lord appeared to me three years ago when I got my heart attack and I started the long process of my walk with Christ. After I got saved, I started attending Pastor Colonna's church services, which started out great, but later on, my family wasn't so fond of my decision. And because of that decision, my family and I, we went through a lot. And I'm really grateful that my pastor and his family was there to help me because if they weren't, then I don't think I would have been who I am today. My family, they were really against the idea of me being a Christian at first, but after they saw the changes in my life, before and after I got saved, and that's when they started to accept my decision to follow Christ. And I'm going to have to thank God for helping me and using my pastor and the family to talk to me, to give me advice on how to approach my family and how to take baby steps. 
toll with this new new belief that I have in Christ. I really want to thank those who were involved in this, who those who were involved with helping my pastor and my mom and Lila and Isaac to set up in Myanmar. I really want to thank you guys so so much for helping them get set up in Myanmar. It was quite difficult, it was quite hard coming to a third world nation but I'm just I'm really happy and really really thankful that you know you guys took your time and took your tithe and for everything just to help them to set up here. It's 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 really great and I'm really appreciative that you guys did that for us. And I can't wait to come to America and come meet you guys. It's gonna be so much fun. Hey mom, hey pastor. I know I'm a lot to handle at sometimes but I wanna thank you guys for taking me as your kid and Show me so much love and so much care when I was with you guys. And I can't wait to see you guys soon. Love you guys.